What test tube company was just acquired for six billion dollars? Is setting code coverage Pretty dangerous? And 97% of software testing pros are using automation. Are you? Find out the answers to these and all other end to end full pipeline, DevOps, software testing, automation testing, performance testing, and security testing in 10 minutes or less in this episode of the Test Guild News Show for the week of August 28th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. This episode of the Test Guild News Show is sponsored by the awesome folks at Apply Tools. Apply Tools has a visual AI validation testing platform that's a must have for any automation project, but don't miss it. Check it out yourself with their free account offer by clicking in the link in the first comment down below. And while you're there, why not leave a comment, subscribe, and get alerted every time we release a new episode. First up, automation news. Want to know how to use your software development lifecycle traceability to fix test automation? If so, this next article by Curiosity is going to be a great help to you. So obviously, the increased demand for software, faster delivery, and better quality calls for greater automation across every stage of the software development lifecycle. In fact, 46% believe that increasing the level of automation is the most important aspect when moving towards making testing and development more efficient. So this article goes over what is software development lifecycle traceability and where you should use it, symptoms of low traceability in testing, building traceability through models, continuous delivery from design to release, and a whole bunch more. So definitely check this out because I believe it's actually something a lot of you all are probably struggling with. So last week, we talked about how Nightwatch.js just released a new feature that allows you to record scripts within the Chrome browser. Well, the creator of WebDriver.io, Christian Broman, reminded me that they just released a feature as well that's similar to this. So let's check it out. So the WebDriver extension for DevTools allows you to export tests directly from the recorder panel. Also, the Chrome recorder extension lets you export user flows as WebDriver I.O. test scripts from the recorder panel into Chrome DevTools. And you can get this all done with just a few clicks. All you need to do is install this extension and you'll see a new export as WebDriver I.O. test script option available under the export menu. So thank you, Christian, for letting me know about this new feature. If you haven't tried WebDriver I.O., I highly recommend you do. I hear it from a lot of people on my podcast that it's one of their go-to frameworks. So definitely check that out in the first comment down below. Is setting code coverage dangerous? Well, according to this next LinkedIn article, it just may be. And this is from Valentina that mentions a mistake made by engineering managers is to set an arbitrary minimum code coverage, example, minimum of 80% coverage to teams that do not have adequate skill sets leading to bad consequences. I've seen this myself as well, working for a large, huge organization they had these arbitrary numbers and people would just game the system. And so Valentina mentions that same type of situation that she ran into as well and talks about how the situation was worse than before with the same amount of bug counts remained, delivery speed dropped and motivation plummeted all from code coverage. And there's actually linked to even more information. So, so if this is something you and your team are struggling with or it's something you're thinking of implementing, definitely check this out as well before you do. So I was recently speaking with Don Jackson at Microfocus. He mentioned that they have a lot of great resources on their YouTube channel that can help you. And one of his latest videos is all about model-based testing, which I think a lot of people don't use, but which they would get a lot of benefit from if they did. So let's check that out. So the Microfocus channel that Don pointed me to, actually he goes over model-based testing, goes why model-based testing is important, what is model-based testing, and he also has some other resources as well within this channel. So definitely a cool approach to try if you haven't tried it already, and thank you, Don, for this resource. So need to get the money flowing from this next announcement that Microfocus was just acquired for $6 billion. That's right, you heard me correctly, $6 billion. So let's check it out what this acquisition is all about. So Microfocus is being acquired by Open Text, and this acquisition, when it goes through, or if it goes through, I don't know if it's official yet, is actually going to create one of the world's largest cloud businesses enabling digital transformations. And the article just goes into more and more detail of what it all means. Uh, the reason why I basically bring it up is when I started my career, you know, over 20, almost 25 years ago, uh, the tool set I used was for Mercury Interactive. And so Mercury Interactive became Mercury and then Mercury was acquired by HP. And then HP uh, was acquired, HP, then the tool set that HP owned was acquired by Microfocus. And now the tool sets at Microfocus 
since microfocus is being acquired is now going to be owned by open tech so if you're following along that's a long chain hopefully the tools will continue to thrive even as they're being acquired by yet another company and so if this is something you want to learn more about definitely check out that link in the first comment down below so I just saw the results of a recent survey by the company Cobaton, where they said, based on their survey results, over 90% of software testing pros are using automation. This is a huge jump from when I started my career, especially when I started promoting automation on my personal blog in 2010. A lot of people weren't interested in automation testing, and it was really hard to convince them that there was a place for it, however small it may be within your software development lifecycle. So... Let's dive into some of these other results of the survey. And it turns out, based on the results, software testers are relying more on automation than ever before, which is driven by a desire to lower testing costs and improve software quality and user experience. Also, 40% of testers responding to Cobaton's study said their primary motivation for using automation was to help improve user experience. And it goes over how automation software testing has come a long way. It dives into some other numbers, like, like what percentage of test cases are automated, what percentage of test cases do you want to be automated, and some other information as well. So let me know in the comments if you're one of the 97%, or even better, if you're not one of the 97%, let me know why you're not using automation. So the next article that caught my attention is from Mohammed. And the reason why I caught my attention was I used to use Rest Assured and I came across a test case back in the day where we had to validate a JSON schema. This article actually goes over how to perform a JSON schema validation using Rest Assured. So the article goes over what is JSON, what are some important syntax rules for JSON, has some good examples, how to understand a JSON file, uh, talks a little bit about a JSON array, JSON objects, what is the JSON schema, how to generate JSON schema for the JSON request for an API, how to understand the JSON schema, and more importantly, step-by-step, -step, how to perform the JSON schema validation using Rest Assured with a code example. So really great stuff by Mohammed as always. So thank you, Mohammed, for all you've been doing lately for the community. Next up, performance and site reliability news. So I found this next article via Alexander Podelka on LinkedIn on resilience testing. So a lot of people know about chaos engineering. I think with performance testing, a uh, more common type of testing technique that I think testers need to know about, and that is resilience testing. So Alexander points to a post by Jonathan on how to utilize AWS Fault Injection Simulator in AWS Resilience Hub to refactor a simple serverless application. And then the article points directly to an AWS article. Some cool features that it has is injection of various failure events for supporting AWS services and resources. You can use verification that existing alums can detect an outage or critical issues and a bunch of other things. And this actually goes over how to deploy a sample application, how to add your application to the Resilience Hub, how to configure alums and FIS experiments in Resilience Hub, and how to run a FIS experiment along with cleanup. So this is definitely a technique I think all testers should know about, so definitely check this out to learn more. If you're into performance testing, you should definitely follow Mark Dawson. Definitely check out his blog. He's always posting really in-depth, thoughtful articles that I don't necessarily see anywhere else. And this next one is no exception. It's all about hunting down system interrupts. And Nautical dives into sources of system interrupts, how not to reinvent the wheel, system interrupting testing tools, which is always really cool with some cool examples on how to use them as well. So as always, an awesome article by Mark. So thank you, Mark, for that, and definitely check it out as well. Next up, security testing news. This next article is how a company just received a fresh round of funding to protect APIs in web apps. And if you don't know, some of the offerings that ThreadX has is API protection, bot, DDoS mitigation and traditional web application firewall for first and third party web applications. And the platform builds a profile of threat actors, leveraging a detection and correlation engine to show which actors are actively attacking and which might pose the greatest threat. And that's why tools like this are so important and that you definitely should be checking out researching as well if you're not already. For links of everything of value we covered in this news episode, head on over to links in the first comment down below. And while you're there, Make sure to check out our awesome sponsor, Apply Tools, free account offer, and discover how to take your animation testing to the next level, leveraging visual AI. So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild News Show. I'm Joe, and my mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end -end full pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, 
test everything and keep the good. Cheers.